In today's video, I attempt to build a mega base in just 100 days. We are starting in a brand new survival world completely from scratch, so let's see how big of a base we can build. Now this took a long time including the recording, but also just the designing of the base, so if you could subscribe that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, let's get straight into it with day zero. A brand new world, a brand new mega base, and I got the worst spawn ever. I couldn't actually move until I broke down this tree, and when I did break it, down I found this nice cliff here and I was like hmm this is a nice area this could be where the mega base is going to go so I got working on you know the basic stuff like some stone tools and I found a village as well normally when I play Minecraft I'll have a nice look around I'll explore a little bit I won't just build up the spawn but this video is different I'm going to try and defeat the ender dragon as quick as possible and look at that for a blacksmith and when I say I'm basically speed running Minecraft I am not a speed runner okay I don't know how to speed run Minecraft I know some basics but I'm not using most strats as you can see see here as I'm mining for some iron as I don't trust myself not to die in the nether. But we're still on day zero and we've got a load of good stuff including full iron armor and we've managed to get ourselves a bow and some arrows as well. And I actually managed to get enough iron on that first day to get myself some decent iron tools as well including multiple pickaxes which was lovely. If you're wondering this is how I got the bow and arrow I just traded with some Fletcher villagers which are really easy all you needed was some flint and some wood. I also killed some chickens for good luck and then I set up a chest here where I want to build the mega base and set my spawn so when I get back from the end I'll be back here and then I did my best to make a sort of easy nether portal which wasn't too hard because I got some obsidian from the blacksmith earlier but before I went in I went and carved a pumpkin and grabbed it for later and then I went to the nether where we had a pretty horrendous spawn like if this was a speed run people would probably give up quite quickly as this spawn was not good but either way made myself some gold boots so that the piglins would attack me killed some endermen in this warped forest here as I couldn't be bothered trading for all those pearls as mining gold is quite boring managed to get three pearls from those guys which is pretty good but I also did some trading as well and nearly died to a ghast here which was very angry at me for some reason but I killed it with my bow and arrow which is pretty funny to kill a ghast with your first arrow in a minecraft world and then I found a nether fortress and quite a good one as well it wasn't hidden away I also did some more trading and got some pearls these guys here wanted to give me all the pearls I managed to get up to 10 which probably isn't enough but we'll do a bit more trading later and then I went to kill some blazes and I got very unlucky killing these blazes. I'm not sure what the rates of blaze rods are, but I killed seven. That's right, seven blazes, and I didn't get a blaze rod, as you can see here. No blaze rods. Finally, though, the eighth dude, he dropped one, and then they started rolling in. We started getting loads of blaze rods, luckily, and we managed to get ourselves eight, and we left. Mining some gold along the way, because we still need to get a few more ender pearls, and we made it back to our portal, which was kind of tricky, because it was quite far away, and we got trading with this piglin here and he gave me the final three ender pearls that I needed so I headed home and slept. I then made myself some extra pickaxes as I wasn't just going to the end to kill the ender dragon I had a purpose there and then we set off on our quest to find the end portal. And luck was on my side as none of my pearls broke which was nice and look at that baby wolf there wasn't that cute. I then dug down to the end portal I decided to build a staircase down eventually rather than just digging straight down and we found it and normally I spend a long time searching these things but we got kind of lucky with this one and here you can see I just placed a few torches went around the corner and there it is the end portals right there we didn't need all of our eyes of ender which was nice I got some stuff from this chest here new iron sword and then we headed in with our pumpkin on our head because I was taking no risks if I got hit by an enderman here I was probably gonna die as I uh, I'm pretty bad at that sort of thing although it might have been worth it because trying to kill the ender dragon while wearing this stupid pumpkin on your head is horrible Horrible. You can't see anything, which is why most of this is in third person mode as you can see here Just because it just feels nicer, but finally after a lot of arrows We managed to finally kill the ender dragon in just four days Absolutely lovely and look at all that XP that's gonna help us out so much in the start of days And we're not actually leaving the end straight away. Oh, no, we're looking for that end fortress This is my idea rather than mining diamonds I wanted to get some gear from some end cities like diamond leggings etc and just hopefully get some good things from here and we also managed to get ourselves an elytra as well which is always good look at this little trick i did here to get over so i didn't have to bridge very nice water bucket trick kind of risky but you 
know me. I'm a pro water bucket MLG dude. I got it with ease. I also managed to get a hand on a nice diamond pickaxe with Fortune 3. Some diamond armor, some diamonds, some iron, some gold. You know all that goodies before heading home where it's day six and it's time to get to work on the base. And this base is going to be built using some easy to gather items as I've only got a hundred days, which sounds like a lot. But when you're building a base of this size, it takes quite a long time. And if you watch my Empire series, that base there, for example, I've not finished it yet. And that has taken me probably about like 500 days so far of Minecraft time. And a lot of that came from gathering the resources. So I decided to build out of the more basic stuff here. I also started a strip mine on the way. I ran into this geode here, which is lovely. Could use some of that for later on. That was lucky. However, this wasn't lucky. I ran into a ravine when I wanted to get further down, but there are some good resources in there that I could get later. But I just skipped past it where I found my first naturally spawning diamonds using my fortune free pickaxe measure to turn four into eight. I also added some stairs down so that I could make it down with ease. And then I went strip mining for a bit, as you can see by this awful time lapse here where I tried to capture me strip mining. However, it's very awkward to do so as I just move around and change pace so much. But I managed to get myself a load of diamonds in this time and I basically used up a diamond pickaxe until it broke, but it doesn't matter because I got 48 diamonds. So we're all good. And I was doing this partially for the diamonds, but mainly for the stone deep slate and stuff down there that we managed to gather. I'm also going to be needing some food and we can't live off bread forever. So I lured back these cows here and some sheep by accident and fenced them in our area and bred them up using some of the wheat that I got from the village. But it's time to start mapping out where our base is going to be. And this here is a basic layout. I'm using some cobblestone, obviously, as it's such an easy block to get. And you can kind of see it's looking quite big already, but we've only just done the bottom layer. I also wanted to make a path up to the base. So I used some spruce slabs here and then just used the shovel to make a path block because it's just easy. I don't want to waste time gathering like coarse dirt, etc., because it's just not worth it. We want to get building the base rather than the path. I did, however, grab a stone cutter from the village nearby to make some granite walls as out the front of the base here, I wanted to make a little farm area. I say little, it's quite big, but we want the wheat so that we can feed the cows to get more beef. Also, it's always weird at the start when you actually need seeds because in a few days time, I'm just going to have too many seeds. But at the start, you never have enough for what you need. And it's really frustrating. You have to go punch grass, which feels so stupid. Unlike killing cows, which feels good. Also, killing horses feels even better. I was actually doing this for leather, but also just because it's fun to kill horses. But on day 15, I went on a little adventure to gather some materials from other biomes. I found some books in this village here as well as some paper and a compass and some maps. I found a desert temple where I managed to get myself some gunpowder which I used to make some rockets to help with our elytra. The elytra is not just for traveling around but it's so we can get up and down the higher parts of our base. It also means I don't have to go and find a jungle to get bamboo for scaffolding or use dirt blocks etc. Seeing as we hadn't really used anything yet I made some maps and then I locked them in using some glass panes here so that we could have like a sort of side by side comparison of the area before we build anything and after we built anything. It's going to look really cool on day 100. And although I had got some decent tools from the end, I hadn't got all the tools that I needed. So I went and got myself some obsidian as well as some diamonds and made myself an enchanting table which I needed, of course, some bookshelves to go around. And you'll see me throughout this just enchant some tools when I need them. I needed a shovel right then, so I went and got a shovel. I really should have got an axe so I could get this dark wood here, but instead I used up my iron axe and then I had to punch leaves to get some saplings, which I brought home and planted in this area to the right of my base, which is very ugly, but it has a purpose and that's all that matters. And on day 18, I decided, you know what? Let's get building something. So I decided to build the front gate to our mega base here. And this didn't take too long to build, only about four days or so. And you can see what we're going for. We've got the gradient on the bottom. Oh, and I also ran out of wood at one point, so I had to go chop down a tree. But we've also got some spruce, some oak, some dark oak, and some deep slate for the roof. And you can see here, we've got these nice two towers looking rather grand. I realized I was still using some iron tools, so I made up some diamond ones and tried to get some decent enchantments. But all the enchantments I got were terrible, so I had to go and get this grindstone from this village here and then try again. And we managed to get some decent ones this time on our sword and our extra diamond pickaxe. However, it did use up all of our levels and we've only got 34 left. For this mega base, we are going to be having a lot of stone bricks. And to make stone bricks without a silk touch pickaxe, you need, of course, to smelt some cobblestone. So I decided to make myself a super smelter. This will come in useful for just, you know, other resources, glass, etc. Anything you need to smelt as well. 
well. So luckily now, thanks to the fortune working on iron, I have a lot of iron and I managed to make myself a load of hoppers and this super smelter, which is such a simple design. I've made this so many times now. I just love it. You just flick a lever and you get so much stuff back. It's awesome. And also it's just a bit nicer than having to go find a blooming villager and trade with him for a silk touch buck. But what's not nice is my Elytra. It's slowly degrading and I don't want that. So I had to actually go and trade with some villagers anyway to try and get myself a mending buck. And I got one here. It cost 24 emeralds. Yes, I could convert them, but there's just no point because all I wanted was the mending buck and it's just too much effort to go get a zombie and all that stuff when I could just trade some sticks for some emeralds. However, I used up all my iron to make that super smelter. So I had to go get some more to make myself an anvil so I could put this book on our Elytra. I then spent the next few days gathering up some materials and I also went and fixed up my Elytra by going down into the mine here and mining a load of coal as I don't really have an XP farm or a way to get XP at the moment. I also gathered myself a load of stone and deep slate down here at the same time, smelting some in my furnaces down there at the same time I was mining and you can see it's nice and fixed up. So I had enough for the stone part of our build but I needed some wood as well so I went and chopped down all these trees here and you probably saw earlier I managed to get myself an axolotl and I decided to name him Ronald, I don't know why, and I built him a little pond because I just wanted to. I know I'm getting distracted from building the base but I really wanted Ronald to be happy. I then gathered some oak wood which is the only remaining thing I needed and then on day 32 we got working on a big build. We did about eight days of building here and we built up a lot of stuff including the left side here where we got this nice sort of like little building and on the right side we've got a tower which we built as well which is a very tall tower. I'm not sure if it's the tallest but it's one of the tallest and you can see it's looking good. It's looking mega but there was a block I still hadn't gathered yet so on day 41 we headed out into the ocean in search of some moss. On the way we managed to find some bamboo which I wasn't actually looking for but will be very nice to make some scaffolding. I also went looking for the buried treasure and I managed to find it under here. It's actually a really easy one to get. Got a couple of diamonds, some gold, you know how it is. And then we set out on the sea again looking for that moss block. And in here, there wasn't any, but we did sleep, which I always find funny because you have a little air pocket when you sleep so you don't actually die. We then raided another couple of boats and then I found this chicken just in the middle of the ocean, which was very confusing until this drowned appeared and it was a baby drowned. So it must have spawned a baby zombie chicken, which is kind of rare. But either way, we went looking some more. I found an ice spikes biome. And then finally in this shipwreck here, after we raided the first two chests, this one here had our moss block. Lovely. Jubbly. So on day 43, we got taking it home and we bow milled around our axolotl pen here to make it look a little bit nicer. And I actually wanted to get some work done on the outside of the base. So I placed some more fence and walls and then I placed some dirt on this side. And we also started adding in some carrot and potato farms. I don't have a lot of carrots and potatoes, but we will be growing them throughout the rest of this video. But it's time to stop messing around and time to start gathering some more materials for some more building, including some dark oak wood, some spruce wood. We have way too much spruce wood now. I need to stop gathering spruce wood as you can see here. I also went back down into the mine where I spent a long time collecting some stone, some deep slate, you know, basically everything we need. I also got 12 diamonds plus a load of redstone, gold and iron. And I was also smelting the stone as we went. So we did have some smooth stone already. I then decided to document on the maps here the progress we had made as we were approaching day 50, aka the halfway point. And as you can see, quite a lot has changed since that first map we did. But more is going to change now as I started placing down the layer of dark oak that we're doing here. I, however, ran out of dark oak very quickly. So I had to go get more dark oak. And then I came back and I placed more dark oak planks. There you go. And that's all the dark oak planks we're going to place down there. However, you see there's a space missing. That's because we're going to be putting a building there. But first, I wanted to do something different. So I went and killed some fish and then I tamed a cat. Why? Because I like animals and this cat was very cute and I wanted to tame it and I'd seen it since the start. Unfortunately, we have no name tags, but we did manage to tame the cat and we brought it up onto the deck here where it will stay forever because it's that sort of like little mascot. I planted some more potatoes and carrots after harvesting them a little bit more to try and spread out the carrots and potatoes. And then then we got to work on another big time lapse here, starting on the main building of our base. But I quickly got distracted by this tower here, which is just a tower. That's it. It's just a tower. Anyway, back to the main base where we're going to be building a slightly different building. This one here is going to be very similar in design. However, it is, you know, a bit wider than the towers we already have going. And the roof has, you know, that little bit sticking out in it there, which is nice. And look, 
it's looking really quite big now, this base. I'm kind of getting a bit scared at how quickly it's coming along. We're only on day 60. I honestly thought it would take more time to build than this, but I guess I just build really quickly, apparently. But you can see here, our coal was getting low in our super smelter, and I also wanted an adventure. So firstly, we set out to the desert, where we found some desert temples, managed to get ourselves some cool little items. I was mainly looking for gunpowder, so that one there was very nice. It means we can get some more rockets, which is lovely, as we were getting kind of low. I also found a load of bones which would be great for bow milling. I found a couple of books and an enchanted golden apple, but most importantly, a silk touch book. This will help us with gathering stone. I also found a gold silk touch pickaxe, and then I made some more fireworks to get home as I'd completely ran out. When I got home, I wanted to make myself that silk touch pickaxe, so I enchanted this pickaxe here, and it got fortune too, which means I can't add silk touch on it, so I had to go disenchant it, but then I was completely out of enchantment points, so I had to head out here to mine some coal, which is good, because I needed coal, and also to get XP, and we managed to fix up our elytra as well whilst doing this. Killed a goat because why not? It got in my way. Either way, we managed to get 30 levels there and we managed to get ourselves a whole lot of coal. We headed home, put our coal in our super smelter and then we got enchanting a pickaxe only for it to get silk touch, which is awesome but it means I've got this extra spare silk touch book. So I was like looking at the camera like, what do I do? So I just went mining for some stone because I need some stone. I also found this slime here and I killed this slime. I don't know why I was jumping at it like an idiot. Uh, I decided to just kill it eventually. But it's day 63 and you know what that means more building just kidding we're gonna add some more farmland in on the right hand side some more wheat because i like how they look and i think wheat fields are really cool i also added the central bit here and i wanted some flowers for the central bit so i went out looking for a flower forest found one then instantly got distracted by these horses here so i went on a little bit of a killing rampage killing all these horses as we haven't killed many horses so far this video and after that little distraction i managed to gather myself a load of flowers mm, lovely flowers once we got home we decided to make ourselves another diamond hoe and we enchanted this one only managed to get efficiency too, which is okay because we're all going to be using it for leaves. As that's right, we added our silk touch book to it and called it Ho 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 Merry Christmas Leave. <laughs> get it? Anyway, we added in some of our own custom spruce trees here into the central section that I was talking about before and look how cool they look. I'm pretty happy with them. And then of course I did in all the flowers that I collected. Bring us to day 69 where I turned around, looked at things and I was thinking, yeah, this is looking pretty good. I then came across this zombie inside my cow farm and I don't know why, it just made me laugh. I also lit up the inside of my base some more as things were spawning in it and it was kind of annoying having mobs attack me occasionally. So I tried to light it all up and then we got doing some more building, this time on a big tower behind the sort of main building we've got on the top here. I also had to go collect some more oak during this time lapse as you can see there. And then finally, we'd finished off the big massive tower which is the tallest point of the base. And this took about five days to build. But rather showing you how it looks. I'm getting some granite here. We're actually heading down and mining more granite. I also found some diamonds when I was mining the granite. Ooh, lovely diamonds. I also got some oak trees and then I got some oak fences. As that's right, we're making another path. As I wanted to move my cows to the outside, as it's kind of silly having cows inside your base, mainly because they're loud and annoying. I also glitched out my game completely here somehow. Don't know what happened, but I was just like stuck in the ground and then I was just flying around like an idiot. And in fact, my game actually crashed and all that thing that I just built there got reset, which is so annoying. Annoying. Either way, we got rebuilding it again instantly, and then we went and got some wheat and lured back some cows. I could have got the cows from inside my base, but these ones were nearby, and I just wanted to get some new cows. And to finish it off on day 76, I did in some hay bales for a little bit of decoration in the cow field. But we're flying up and looking around. You know what that means? The final tower on this side is getting built. A tall tower. I'm not sure if it's actually taller than the other parts of the base, but it's pretty tall. And whilst I was in the middle of building it, I went into my chest room, which is just a mess, to get some stuff from the chest. And look what this guy's doing. He's following me around. That's kind of annoying. And then he did this. <sighs> I hate creepers, they're so annoying. Anyway, back to the building where we got working on the tower once again. It only took around three more days to finish, bringing us to day 80 where we now had finished what I had originally planned after only 80 days. So I killed a chicken to celebrate and then I went and tamed a wolf as well. But I thought, you know what? We could probably make this base a bit bigger. So I went back into my creative world and I designed another tower to add. So then we went and got some more XP from our furnaces, which I completely forgot you could do because I needed to fix my Elytra. And look, it managed to fix it all. We were only mining like three furnaces, which which is good. And then we went back down and we went looking for a name tag. There was this mine chef nearby. I got a bit distracted from building, I know, because I wanted to get a name tag so I could name my cat. I found one chest and it had a golden apple, but no name tag. But the second one, it had a name tag. Look at me swishing it around with joy. I took it home and then I named it on my anvil. And what I decided to do was name my cat rather than my dog. And I called her Carol, third of her name, eater of fish, because look at her, she's cute. I then went back down into my mine to mine a load of deep slate as well.
as a load of stone. And I did find some diamonds at the same time. 13 diamonds, which 13 is actually my lucky number. So I felt very lucky here. So I went up instantly and started building another tower. The one that I talked about earlier. This wasn't originally part of the plan, but I'm just so quick at building apparently that I need to add more towers. And this tower is actually connected to the main building through a bridge here. I love how these bridges look and I wanted to add one into this base seeing as I had the time to do so. And although it looks kind of weird, I think it fits in very nicely with the rest of the build and this thing is looking kind of mega now. I know I could probably have made it bigger. It's not mega in comparison to other things I've built, but I'd say this qualifies as a mega base. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. But we're not going to just leave it like this. We've still got a few days left and I decided to go get some more spruce leaves until my hoe broke and I also went and got a load of spruce logs as well. Actually, I didn't. I already had all the spruce logs because I'm going to be adding in some spruce trees around this side of the base where the new tower is. I also fenced it off as well and we have a final time lapse here showing some spruce trees being built. Look how nice these are just adding into the build. I feel like it just makes it look a little bit better than it did with the normal vanilla oak trees before and here we have a little shaders fly through. This thing is looking rather good if I do say so myself. I'm quite happy with it and we built it all in 93 days and you know what? The challenge was to build a mega base within 100 days and I think I succeeded. So what I decided to do was just build up a little podium here to put on all the resources we'd gather along the way aka the diamonds, emeralds, gold etc like that. There's actually some gold in the base up above as well which you can't see in this bit here but I stacked them all up including some iron blocks as well to fill it out as well as a couple of emerald blocks and then we turned around we had a look at the base. It's looking rather epic. There's only one thing left to do and that is to update our maps which I did and you can see here the progress we made. It is looking great. Look how cool that looks from above, especially with the dark oak planks in now. That made such a big difference for the base. I love it. And here you can see all our final stats, but that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I shall see you over time. Goodbye.